As part of our EV101 series, we're doing a trio of videos that will go through many of the terms you're going to see getting tossed around in car reviews and explanations of how electric or zero emission vehicles work. Some of these will be quite straightforward, while others can be a bit more nuanced. This is our EV101 Acronyms and Initialisms Charging Terms and Technology video. If you're looking for Acronyms and Initialisms for Drivetrains 101 or ATIS 101, those will be linked in the description below. While not representing the biggest technical difference in how electric vehicles work compared to the internal combustion vehicles we're used to, charging by far is what people tell us they're most intimidated by when they consider transitioning to an EV. And at the channel, we'll be first to admit the charging landscape can be confusing at first. One big part of that is that there are a ton of terms relating to how to understand and charge an electric vehicle. So this video will hopefully explain and demystify many of the terms and acronyms you're going to come across as you start exploring the EV world. I'll try to move through these as fast as I can. But before I do, I want to remind you to please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you want to help us keep doing what we're doing while staying independent of automaker sponsorship money, please consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. And of course, there are chapter markers on the YouTube progress bar and timestamps in the video description if you want to skip to a specific term. Now, on to charging. The first two terms we're going to start with represent different ways of understanding similar information. There's a vehicle's SOC, or state of charge, and its GOM, or guess o meter both of these provide information about what's happening in a vehicle's battery, but do it quite differently. Some vehicles offer only one or the other, while other vehicles offer both. The state of charge is a simple statement about how much energy is currently available in a battery pack. If the battery was charged 100% and you've used 20% since then, then the SOC is 80%. You can think of the SOC reading as being analogous to the fuel gauge in an internal combustion car. Once that reaches zero, the battery will be flat, just like running out of fuel for an ICE vehicle. The guessometer takes consideration of the battery's state of charge and adds in your recent and current driving behavior, any additional loads on the battery, such as running a cabin heater, and in some cases, information about an upcoming route programmed into vehicle navigation, to produce an estimation of how far the vehicle can travel before the battery is depleted. The vehicle is making an educated guess, and that estimation will change as circumstances do, hence the name guessometer. GOMs are actually more common in driver information displays for EVs than SOC figures. Knowing how much charge a vehicle has, and if it needs more, takes us to the step of actually charging, which we'll kick off by talking about an EVSE, or Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. An EVSE provides AC electricity, which is what you get out of your household wall outlets, to the charger built into a BEV or PHEV to charge its battery. Colloquially, we call this a charger, but the actual charging unit is built into the car, and the EVSE only provides appropriate power for the charger to work with. EVSEs are used for charging on 110 volt to 20 volt, and outside the USA sometimes on three-phase AC power as well. Using an EVSE to charge at 110 volts is sometimes called level 1 charging, and charging at 220 volts is sometimes called level 2 charging. EVSEs can be hardwired into a building's electrical system or connected through an appropriate wall socket. In much of the world, an EVSE is connected to an electric vehicle through a connector and inlet called a J1772, which you can see here. In Europe, the Type 2 connector is used instead, and you can see that here. In Europe, this is also sometimes referred to as a Menekes connector, while North American Tesla cars have their own proprietary connector that looks like this. Just reference though, North American Teslas come with an adapter so they can also charge off a J1772 connector. Okay, you know how I just said the actual charger for your car is built into it, and you use an EVSC to supply the car's charger with electricity? Now I'm going to tell you something different, because while that's true for AC charging, it isn't true for DC-FC, or DC fast charging, sometimes called supercharging. Side note, while supercharging is only the name given to Tesla's rapid charging tech, it's quickly entered into the lexicon of many people as meaning high-power EV charging. Just as Hoover has become synonymous in some countries with vacuuming, and Xerox has become synonymous with photocopying, supercharging is becoming a go-to for DC quick charging. Oh, and while some people say DC quick charging is level 3, that's technically incorrect. And as Professor John Kelly notes in this video, which I'll link below, there isn't a level 3 DC quick charging yet. Most, but not all, modern BEVs can DC fast charge, though the maximum rate at which they do so varies enormously from model to model. And a small number of PHEVs can do so as well. When using a DC fast charger, the actual, quote, 
charging unit is in the charging station, not the car. DCFC charges up an EV's battery pack far faster than charging an AC power does. If AC charging is a garden hose, DC fast charging is a fire hose, and it's what enables electric cars to do things like go on long road trips. It's worth noting that while charging an EV using AC power is per mile usually far cheaper than fueling an ICE vehicle with petrol, DC fast charging tends to be about as costly per mile as fueling a reasonably efficient ICE car. But the overwhelming majority of charging tends to happen on AC electricity for nearly every EV owner. Given what we just learned about AC charging connectors, I'm sure you won't be surprised to hear there are a variety of charging connectors for DC fast charging as well. But things don't break down as neatly by region with DC fast charging. The first connector to talk about, which is actually two related connectors, is CCS, or the Combined Charging System. CCS takes the J1772 or the Type 2 plug, depending on region, and adds a set of DC charging pins onto the bottom of it, as you can see here, to make CCS Type 1 or CCS Type 2, respectively. The CHAdeMO DC fast charging standard is similarly global, but its popularity is waning outside of Japan. Unlike CCS, a CHAdeMO port is only used for DC fast charging, and cars that use CHAdeMO also have J1772 ports for their AC charging needs. You can see what a CHAdeMO looks like in this image. In China, the GB Stroke T connector is becoming the standard, and you can see that here. In North America, Tesla uses the proprietary connector I showed you when we were talking about AC charging for its DC charging needs as well. It keeps things simple, but because it's proprietary, an adapter is required to charge at non-Tesla fast chargers. And for DC fast charging, the owner has to buy that adapter themselves. Because of how good the Tesla charge network is, most owners won't bother. I know that all this can feel like a lot, and it is. But some of that is because we grew up learning about the complexities and nuances of driving combustion vehicles, so we don't think about them anymore. If you've never seen an ICE vehicle explaining octane ratings, petrol versus diesel fuel, filter specs, and oil viscosity numbers would seem incredibly esoteric too. Hell, there was a fair bit of confusion when oil went multi-viscosity, which meant that, if you chose the correct oil, you didn't have to change weights based on the season. And my granddad got a diesel Merc in 1984, his friends were amazed that he could deal with the different fueling infrastructure structure from what they were all used to. None of this is as complex as it looks at first, and hopefully this video has helped explain a bit of what you're seeing, especially if you're researching EVs for the first time. That's it for today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There's a link in the video description. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transrevolve Take 2, for longer takes. And don't forget to give the bell a little ring on both our channels so you don't miss out on our next video. Thanks to me half the entire T crew go out to the folk on right for being our $15 to $49 a month patrons. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Jason Boder, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Long, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahada, Brophy Wolf, Tazan Lagong, Gordon C., Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodson, Anthony Coates, Regine Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month patron supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, J.P. Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. Feeling left out? You can join our Patreon at the link below, or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. Links to those below as well. Thanks for joining me, and as always, Keep evolving.